to worship with the Faith Community of North Christian Church in Columbus, Indiana. We are an open and affirming congregation of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. We welcome all persons as Christ has welcomed us. Before we begin with our announcements for this morning, I want to make sure that I uh, let you all know that on Sunday, May 24th at 6 o'clock p.m., the National Council of Churches is hosting an online vigil entitled, A Time to Mourn, an ecumenical memorial service for lives lost to COVID-19. And if you would like to tune in and participate in this service of worship, you need to register in advance to, to be able to get the link so that you can participate in the service. So I encourage you to visit the National Council of Churches website, which is simply nationalcouncilofchurches.us, and you can click to register and they will send you the link. As we announce every Sunday, I encourage you to fill out our register of friendships. Now uh, we have it uh, virtually now. There is a link below your video and also on our website where you can let us know that you participated in worship with us. No matter when you are watching or participating in this worship service, we encourage you to let us know that you are here. We also encourage you to sing along with the hymns and you can find the lyrics in the virtual bulletin, which is also below this video and on our website. We encourage you to send in your donations and your tithes and offerings and in a variety of secure ways, you can send a good old fashioned check in the mail via the United States Postal Service. You can arrange an ACH transfer from your bank or you can use our Givelify app. Again, there is a link on our YouTube channel as well as our website for that. Please join us for our virtual coffee fellowship on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. via Zoom. Again, you can find that information in both locations. Please, we encourage you to stay connected. Read our weekly emails, read your monthly Inspirer, Check out what's going on on the Facebook page and in the Facebook group. It's really important that you stay connected to your faith community. Now, let us go to God and worship. And let us begin with a moment of prayer. Loving God, in this moment of worship, we turn our attention away from other distractions and focus our energy on you. We are grateful for your presence in our lives, working in us through the Holy Spirit. We are eager to learn more ways of serving you. Help us to be creative about being the church in this difficult time in our history. Bless each of us as we worship you this day. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn this morning is At the Name of Jesus. Uh, as you can see, I am with my family for the next little bit, which is why we have this change of scenery. Uh, so I'm on my grand piano that I grew up with. Uh, like I said, the opening hymn is At the Name of Jesus. I'll play the introduction and we'll sing all four verses together. Shall bow, every tongue confess. 
Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Acts, the first chapter, the first 11 verses, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's realm. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to, to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what God had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Teacher, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that God has set by God's own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go up into heaven. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, an understanding of the Holy Word. Today is Ascension Sunday, when the church, Big C, marks the risen Christ's transformation from earth to spirit. The resurrected Jesus physically departed earth and ascended into the presence of God in heaven. Or, as the Reverend Tracy Blackman 
Associate General Minister of Justice and Local Church Ministries for the United Church of Christ, recently stated, Ascension is officially the day when Jesus began working from home. In the last chapter of Luke and the first chapter of Acts, both believed to be written by the same author, we read the story of Jesus' ascension. In Luke 24, Jesus commissions his disciples, blesses them, blesses them and sends them out into the world for the love of the world. In our passage from Acts, after Jesus' ascension, the men in white ask the disciples, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? In other words, get going. Receive the Holy Spirit and go into the world proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. Ascension hasn't traditionally been a big deal for our denomination, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, but as we have become more and more devoted to Christian unity and ecumenism over the decades, we have embraced more liturgy and more tradition as well. So let's talk a little bit about the Ascension. We are familiar with the Easter story, of course. We all know that Jesus rose from the dead. We also know about several appearances that Jesus made to his disciples after the resurrection. In verse three from our scripture text for today, we read that Jesus appeared to the disciples over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's realm. Yes, that's right. Jesus' disciples still needed more instruction and coaching from Jesus, even after having a front row seat to his ministry for three years. Though they had been with him all that time, the disciples clearly still did not fully understand Jesus' message. We, 21st century disciples, are likewise commissioned and blessed by Jesus. We have received the Holy Spirit and we are sent out into the world for the love of the world, to declare the good news of God's love for each and all. We know this is our calling too. So why are we standing here looking toward heaven? Let's get going. I know what you're thinking. Going into the world is on hold right now. Though some in government leadership are encouraging us to take unhealthy risks, in some cases even demanding we do so, we instead are following the advice of the more level-headed medical experts and are staying home and staying safe. There will be a time when we can once again go into the world. But right now, that is unsafe. All we can do right now is stand here looking toward heaven, right? Let's not give ourselves a pass. The men in white are nudging us just as they nudged Jesus's first disciples. Get going. But how? Can we go into the world for the love of the world right now? Let us be reminded that the world includes our personal circles, our families, friends, and faith community, those we live with and those with whom we are in touch from a distance. Right now, even during this time of physical distancing, one way we can go into the world is to reach out to those who need a word of encouragement and some companionship. 
look through your list of Facebook friends or your contact list on your cell phone, peruse your address book or your Christmas card list, pick up the phone and call those folks. Offer some words of love and hope, share some memories and some laughs, or maybe some tears. I promise it will lift both of your spirits and you will both feel blessed and less alone. As soon as you hang up the phone, stop right then and pray for that person. You can pray for concerns or joys that they shared with you, or you can simply pray a prayer of thanks for the fact that that person is in your life. Add them to your prayer list. Literally write their name down on your prayer list. Spend time in prayer each day in your home worship space and pray for your list of family and friends that will hopefully grow day by day. What are some other ways that we can go into the world for the love of the world, even during a pandemic? Well, if you are crafty, you can make masks and donate them to folks who need them. Though some in our society are selfishly ditching their masks and some misguided act of bravado, masks remain an important way we can protect others from contracting the virus. The need for masks will be here for many months to come. Show your love for your neighbors by wearing, making, and donating masks. And speaking of donating, another way that you can go into the world for the love of the world is by donating money to your favorite ministries and community programs that are likely short of funds due to the sharp downturn in charitable giving during this time. Even small donations can make a big difference. Support the organizations and institutions that you care deeply about. Help them survive this difficult time. From the safety of your own home, you can support communal policies that protect the most vulnerable in our society. Write and call your congresspersons, stay informed on the issues, get involved, get vocal, get active. Our faith in a God who loves all persons compels us to work for justice. You can elect wise political leadership, apply for a mail-in ballot in advance of the general election and cast your ballot by mail. Elections are always vitally important. But especially in this crucial moment in world history, who we hire to lead us can make a profound difference on our collective future. Before Jesus ascended, he commissioned his disciples to go into the world and carry on the ministry he began. We are the spiritual descendants of those first disciples. We have been commissioned by the risen Christ to go into the world for the love of the world and carry on Jesus's ministry. As a faith community, we not only follow Jesus in the sense of listening to him and learning from him, we also are a community who follows Jesus in the sense of succeeding him, of taking up his mantle and carrying on his life and work. As the SALT commentary points out, the fact that Jesus departs at all is worthy of reflection. 
many founders of movements or companies or political parties stay around as long as they possibly can, often staying too long. And according to the Gospels, the risen Jesus is presumably impervious to death and so could have remained indefinitely. From this angle, the fact that he leaves reveals what sort of movement he has in mind. A community not standing around admiring him or merely waiting for him, but rather active and present in the world, carrying on his work of healing, justice, and proclaiming the dawn of God's joyous jubilee. In the end, the ascension itself is meant to invite and empower the church to be all the more down to earth. Into the world for the love of the world. Let's get going. Even though we're worshiping remotely, each in our own homes because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we remain one body in Jesus Christ. There is no better way to demonstrate our connection than to share in the meal in remembrance of Jesus the Christ. Long ago, Jesus took what was available to him at the dinner table and he gave the matzah and wine on hand new meaning. Today, we use whatever elements are available to us in our own homes and we remember Jesus in our eating and our drinking. So take your bread, your cracker, your biscuit, your cookie, and in breaking this, remember Jesus broken on the cross. And take your juice, water, soda, wine. As you drink, remember Jesus who poured out his life that we might know eternal life. Let these elements be at work in your body and in your life that you may speak truth as witnesses of the life we know in Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Beautiful, Travis, thank you so much. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, there are so many prayer concerns that I know are on our hearts and minds, and I know that you are spending a good deal of time in prayer in your home worship space as this um, time of sheltering in home continues. But let us lift up, firstly, that Indiana has now entered stage three of the so-called back on track plan on Friday. And of course, there are many who are concerned about another surge in new cases of COVID-19 as a result of loosening the restrictions on people being in public places. We also, of course, want to lift up the victims of the super cyclonic storm Amphan that caused widespread damage over East India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. As many as 100 people have died and at least 500,000 people are now homeless and that is just in Bangladesh alone. Please pray for that area of our world. We also pray for something a little bit closer to home, the dam that collapsed in Michigan due to unusually high heavy rainfall and the floodwaters that hit many communities downstream as a result. Let us go to God in a time of silent meditation and lift up the prayers that are in your heart and on your mind. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. We come to you in prayer today, longing to see and sense your presence in these uncertain times. We pray for your world as we seek to understand and find a way to stop the spread of COVID-19. Bring comfort to those who grieve, peace to those who are anxious, Caution to those who needlessly risk their health. Hope for all who are struggling economically, socially, mentally, physically, and in any manner because of this pandemic. Guide the leaders in government and health officials as they make exceedingly difficult decisions in the days and weeks to come. Your care and love, eternal giver of life, extends beyond the boundaries of space and time, beyond the boundaries of creed and doctrine, beyond all boundaries the human mind can imagine. We join our hearts and minds in prayer, seeking your peace and mercy, your presence and comfort. For those of us who grieve, for the sick and hurting and those who care for them, for the poor and the oppressed and the advocates who speak for them. Guide us, we pray, so that we may do your will today and every day. Form us into a healthy, vital, growing followers of Jesus, joined in purpose and vision united in our search for a deeper relationship with you, mighty God, empowered by our salvation through Christ and guided by the presence of the Holy Spirit. We now pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Lord whose love through humble servants. If you have a chalice hymnal at home, it's hymn number 461. I'll play the introduction and we'll sing all four verses together.
has called us to a ministry of hope and love. Let us praise God's name and serve God with joy as we go into the world for the love of the world. Amen. See you next Sunday. Have a good week. Stay home. Stay healthy.